Okay, we're back in part two. So next, um, I'm just gonna create a plane. I'm gonna set it to Z, and I'm just gonna check my front. I'm just gonna check my right viewport here, and I'm gonna place it right behind the 3D uh, text. I'm just gonna scale it up. Okay, so it seems as if these cubes are moving onto the wall. Next, I'm going to set up a camera, so I'm just going to create a camera here. Uh, one trick I usually do is um, I set up, so usually I set up a turntable camera. So I'm just going to create a circle, increase the radius till it's kind of touching this camera here. I'm going to give this circle, sorry, I'm going to click on the camera and I'm going to give it a Cinema 4D tag aligned to spline. I'm going to call this circle cam circle. On the line to spline tag, I'm just going to drag and drop this cam circle into the spline path. So now the camera is literally attached to that circle. That way we can get some really uh, smooth animation. So I'm going to move that to 75%. So it's looking dead on, but uh, it isn't. So I'm going to set up on the camera, I'm going to go to tags, cinema 4D tags and choose target. Now I'm not going to use the object itself. I'm going to create a null and I'm going to call this target null doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to go to my target and I'm going to drag and drop this null into the target object. So now we're literally looking face on because the target nulls right in the middle of my 3D text. I'm going to click on my perspective viewport here and I'm going to click this small icon. So now we're looking through the camera and it's perfectly uh, aligned. So this animation is looking good, but as you notice uh, here, we start off with all the cubes kind of in position and we want them to kind of come from behind the camera, ideally. As you can see here, they're just there and then they move towards the wall. Um, you might want them to start from behind the camera. So I'm going to click on cam circle and reduce the radius till I'm kind of um, about here and then I'm going to increase uh, the focal length of the camera till I don't see any um, cubes. I'm going to keyframe this focal length and I'm also going to keyframe the cam circle radius. And then I'm going to go to frame 140, set the camera focal length to a uh, classic 36 millimeter maybe and the cam circle I'm just going to pull out slightly to about here, place a keyframe there. So now if we look at this animation, um, sorry, I made a mistake. Um, I'm actually not going to touch uh, the focal length. I'm just going to go to animation and delete track. I'm going to make it 25 millimeters wide angle. And I'm not going to animate that. I'm just going to animate my cam circle radius. So I'm just going to zoom in until I don't see anything, place a keyframe there and now I'm just going to pull back and yeah, the animation's kind of forming and the cubes are flying in from behind us. So yeah, sometimes I just attempt things on the fly. Um, I haven't planned this tutorial um, very well, but I think we're getting there. So that should animate nicely. I don't want to overcomplicate it. That's basically the kind of gist of it. Um, I'm going to create a quick material for this um, text. So I'm just going to go to Windows Material Manager, move that up, create a new material. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my Mo text. And I'm going to call this uh, text. Then I'm going to create another one for the wall. I'm going to call this wall. And I'm going to drop that onto my plane, which is the wall. I'm going to double click my Motex material. I'm going to give it a nice kind of um, purple color. Something like this. What's going on here? That's strange. I put it on the wrong place. Just put it on the Boolean. Um, I'm just going to reduce the specular. So we have this new control called reflectance in Cinema 4D. 
And if you want to make it reflective, you basically add a reflective layer like GC, CGX, sorry, sorry, GGX. And we can then just reduce this uh, new layer, the slider. And if you want to reduce the specular, just reduce the slider at the bottom. I'm just going to quickly render this. So as you can see, it's looking quite flat. Um, now I'm just going to go through material and render and lighting settings all at once, just to show you how you can get this looking quite professional. Uh, first, I'm just going to turn on, in render settings, I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. So that's step one. Um, so next I'm going to create a sky object. I need a material for this as well, so I'm just going to go back to my material manager, create a new material. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the sky. And I'm just going to double click it, go to the luminance channel, and I basically want an HDRI map for the texture. So I'm just going to go to my content browser. We have some presets. Okay, so I'm just going to use the search tool and type HDRI. Hit enter. And I'm going to use this uh, cloudy one. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. So that creates a, a texture, an HDRI texture for the sky object. On my plane, uh, the floor material, I'm just gonna go to reflectance and add a Beckman reflection, I'm just gonna reduce it slightly and I'm gonna make roughness about 29% that's basically blurriness so I'm just gonna render this quickly so that's looking uh, a bit more 3D you can see the reflections beginning to come in um, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit more and I'm going to go to my cloner cube and I'm going to add a bit more uh, fillet radius, 0 0.3 centimeters. I'm going to go back to the material and maybe make it a bit more reflective. I'm just going to render this. Okay, so as you can see these reflections here, they're looking quite nice. Um, you might want to place some objects around this kind of uh, scene. So you might want to just use a cylinder and like place it out here somewhere and give that a kind of white material just a pure white luminance material it's a little trick I carry out sometimes I'm just gonna go to the uh, luminance channel and just give it a white color that's it I'm gonna duplicate the cylinder place another one uh, over here behind the camera make sure they're not in the scene and I'm just going to render this segment here. Okay, as you can see, these reflections are looking very nice. It's picking up the cylinder here a bit too much, maybe, but it's definitely um, it definitely helps to have a few objects kind of around the scene, especially if you're using reflections. I think that's pretty much the end. Um, you can try playing with a few other values like uh, the random effector. You could try playing with scale so these don't kind of pop into the scene as quickly. You can give it a uniform scale of, um, I think it should be minus one or one. Uh, this will definitely affect the way these objects kind of appear. It's best to have them maybe scale up. And what you can do is you can add additional effectors as well. So uh, if we just watch the scene from above, it's a bit confusing, but um, we can see these cubes rushing into the scene. So we could add on the cloner, we could add a plane effector, uh, set the fall off to linear, and we could just push it back here somewhere, and we could use this effector to control the scale of uh, these cubes. So, I'd, so I'm just gonna go to parameter, turn off position, and use um, minus one for the scale, uniform scale. And as you can see now, they kind of, um, they scale up as they move in as well. So that just might help uh, smooth out the animation, things, tricks like that. They still look a bit poppy, but um, they're scaling up now. It just gives it that extra uh, dimension. And to make the animation smoother, um, either play with the animation curves. So if you have a keyframe somewhere, just right click, go to animation, show F curve, and then you can, uh, you can make these curves um, linear or you can play with the tangent handles, smooth out the in and out easing. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, please share this and thanks for watching.